how did we never catch that? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 cameos you completely missed. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're taking a look at iconic celebrities that appeared in movies without the audience even noticing. Excuse me, where's the lobby? Down the hall and to the left. Thanks. Number 10. Bill Murray, Dumb and Dumber 2. I like what you've done with the place. Nice cappuccino machine. In this long-awaited sequel, the Farrelly brothers not only reunited with stars Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels, but Bill Murray as well. Who's the astronaut? Oh, that's my roommate. If you missed Murray, that's because he was hidden under a hazmat suit. Returning home for the first time in 20 years, Lloyd learns that Harry has been sharing the apartment with a mysterious man named Ice Pick. How's it going, Ice Pick? Best day ever. Greatest day of my life, really. Calling Walter White to mind, Murray's character makes a living by cooking <clears throat> rock candy that people and cats go crazy for. Folks come from all over the city to buy it. The movie might be called Dumb and Dumber 2, but this is actually a pretty clever Easter egg that only the most attentive moviegoers caught. Burning my eyes. Must be Cajun style. Number 9. Dan Aykroyd, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Ah, Dr. Jones, I'm a Weber. We now go from one Ghostbuster to another, trying to escape from Shanghai. Indy and his friends get some help from a British military officer named Art Weber. Dan Aykroyd plays Weber, although it likely took audiences multiple viewings to realize this. But there might be a slight inconvenience as you will be riding on a cargo full of live poultry. It's easy to overlook Aykroyd's presence since the camera never zooms in on his face. Plus, he puts on a thick English accent and delivers his lines at a rapid pace. Kevin, aren't you Willie Scott, the famous American female vocalist? And Aykroyd isn't the only big name that makes an appearance in this scene. Director Steven Spielberg, co-writer George Lucas, associate producer Kathleen Kennedy, and executive producer Frank Marshall can all be spotted at the airport. Talk about cameo overload. Oh yeah, Jen. Number eight, Nathan Fillion, Guardians of the Galaxy. Check out the new meat. Nathan Fillion is a regular in director James Gunn's movies. He's also best known for playing Malcolm Reynolds, one of the most beloved starship captains of all time. Naturally, Fillion had to pop up somewhere in Guardians of the Galaxy. Even the most die-hard sci-fi fans missed his cameo, though. I'm gonna slather you up in Navi and jelly. <laughs> Go to town. <laughs> Upon arriving at the kiln, our heroes come face to face with numerous monstrous inmates. Fillion voices a blue thug that gives Peter Quill an especially hard time. Luckily, Groot has Peter's back and the thug's nose. Fillion's appearance is admittedly brief, but Gunn offered him a slightly bigger role as Simon Williams in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Number 7. Kristen Wiig her. The following are adult female, can't sleep, and want to have some fun. This film follows the romance between a man named Theodore and an OS named Samantha. Hi. How you doing? Before Theodore falls for the disembodied voice of his dreams, he tries to make a connection with a fellow lonely soul. An unseen Kristen Wiig voices Sexy Kitten, a woman that can't sleep and wants to have some fun. Hi. I'm here alone and I can't sleep. Who's out there to share this bed with me? Initially, she seems like an ideal candidate for a phone sex hookup. When she starts talking about dead cats, however, Theodore suddenly loses his sex drive. Choke me with that dead cat. What? <laughs> the dead cat next to the bed, choke me, choke me with it. Many people didn't recognize Wig's voice, although they probably should have in retrospect. After all, She's one of the few comedians that could pull off this role with just the right balance of quirkiness and kinkiness. Okay, good night. Number six, Glenn Close, Hook. You bet against me bringing Pan back here, didn't you? No. Hook has a couple of fun cameos, but this one is by far the sneakiest. Hiding an Oscar-nominated actress in plain sight is no easy task, but director Steven Spielberg pulled it off in this scene. I did. Yes, you made a boo boo. I did. Mm. I did. Captain Hook isn't at all pleased with fellow pirate Gutless, played by an unrecognizable Glenn Close. 
As punishment for doubting him, Hook condemns Gutless to the Boo Box with a couple of scorpions. The Boo Box. <laughs> Although Gutless is supposedly a man, it wasn't uncommon for women to disguise themselves as male pirates, so perhaps that's the basis behind this cameo. It also wouldn't be the last time Close has done drag. Life without decency is unbearable. Number 5. Paul Rubens, Batman Returns Previously working with Tim Burton on Pee-wee's Big Adventure, Rubens' appearance in Batman Returns saw him play a completely different kind of character. Perhaps that's why he slipped by unnoticed. The usually eccentric Rubens stars as Tucker Cobblepot, a restrained, distant man who views his newly born son as an abomination. Along with his equally heartless wife, played by fellow Pee Wee alumnus Diane Salinger, Rubens' character dumps young Oswald into the sewers, where a family of penguins awaits. Although nobody caught the cameo at first, this has since become one of Rubens' most memorable roles. Perhaps because of this, Rubens would go on to play Penguin's father again in the TV series Gotham. Isabella's over on the other side with us, whispering tales of murder. Number four, Kate Blanchett, Hot Fuzz. Hello. Janine, it's me. I know, I'm at work. Kate Blanchett took a break from Oscar-winning dramas to make an appearance in this laugh-a-minute comedy. Not that you'd notice. Playing Janine, Nick Angel's ex-girlfriend, she is concealed under a mask and coveralls, which not only hides Blanchett, but also means her character blends in with everyone else at the crime scene. Angel can't even differentiate who's who, as he attempts to bid his former lover farewell. Nicholas, what do you want? Well, I have something important to tell you, and I didn't want to do it over the phone. Since Blanchett is arguably the most accomplished performer in the movie, you'd think that the filmmakers would at least show her whole face, Yet, they clearly went out of their way to make sure nobody in the audience spotted her. This just makes her uncredited cameo all the more hilarious. You just can't switch off, Nicholas. And until you find a person you care about more than your job, you never will. Number three, Stephen Colbert, The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug. Erdogan is not a name from The Lord of the Rings. I know it sounds like Erdogan could be Aragorn's dad, but obviously that's Arathorn. I don't have to explain that to you. If you haven't noticed, Stephen Colbert is a pretty big Lord of the Rings fan. There's an important legal distinction between Gollum and Smeagol. Smeagol is a perfectly normal hobbit until he was corrupted by the One Ring and became the creature known as Gollum. As a matter of fact, Peter Jackson has described him as the biggest Tolkien geek he's ever met. In The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug, Jackson finally gave the comedian a chance to visit Middle-earth. Since this franchise has so many characters, it isn't surprising that Colbert got lost in the shuffle. However, he can briefly be seen as a Lake Town spy. He's only on screen for a few seconds, but at least Colbert can say that he's officially part of Tolkien mythology. Colbert returned the favor by letting Smaug crash in on the Colbert Report. We both live in gated communities, and we're both fiscal conservatives who sleep on giant piles of money. Quite right. Time to return to the gold standard. Number two, Steve Buscemi, Pulp Fiction. Hi, I'm Buddy. What can I get you? John Travolta and Uma Thurman are nothing short of captivating during the Jackrabbit Slim scene in Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction. Since all eyes are on these two, audiences often fail to notice Steve Buscemi as their waiter. Dressed as Buddy Holly, Buscemi's character serves up a bloody-as-hell steak and a $5 shake with no bourbon. How do you want that cooked? Run to a crisp or bloody as hell? Bloody as hell and, oh yeah, look at this, vanilla Coke. Buscemi previously played Mr. Pink in Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs, which is technically set in the same universe. So does this mean that the waiter is actually Mr. Pink hiding from the police? If so, he's doing a great job at keeping a low profile. How do you want that shake, Martin and Lewis or Amos and Andy? Martin and Lewis. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Damn little shits. What'd you call me? Huh? Not you, friend. Michelle, please don't hang up. Just talk to me, okay?
Number 1. Daniel Craig, Star Wars, Episode 7, The Force Awakens. You will remove these restraints and leave this cell with the door open. What did you say? Daniel Craig has become iconic for his portrayal of James Bond. But that's not the only blockbuster franchise he's taken part in. Everyone was stunned to learn that Craig played a stormtrooper in Star Wars The Force Awakens. Which stormtrooper, you ask? Remember the soldier that was put in charge of guarding Rey on Starkiller Base? The one that Rey completely mind-tricked and forced to remove her restraints, leave the cell open, and drop his weapon? Daniel Craig. I'll tighten those restraints, scavenger scum. What makes this cameo especially ingenious is that the stormtrooper is named JB007, a clear homage to James Bond and his codename. Well played, Abrams. Well played. I will remove these restraints and leave the cell with the door open. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.